there, friend. Eivor? Swanborough, I... No. Gods, no. Don't say it, please, Eivor. Don't say it. I am sorry. Oh! My hope... No! My poor swan! Oh, gods! He fought bravely and turned the tide to secure a victory. Your dear Hunwald died a hero, and will be so remembered. Oh, gods. I know he would have fainted to hear such praise from your lips. Thank you, Eivor. Thank you. He walks among warriors now. Yes. The lucky man. I imagine he does. I know words are poor salve for a wounded heart. I will leave you to mourn, and know that we are here for you, always, should you need us. Hamptonshire has fallen, and with it, the Kingdom of Wessex. But the cost was great. Maybe too great for all we gained. Rest, then. You have earned it. On the backs of so many. Time will tell if it was worth it. Something for me. What is it? A letter requesting your presence in the southwest, a village called Athelny. Nothing strange about a summons for me, is there? It is not the recipient I find strange. It is the sender. The letter is signed a poor fellow soldier of Christ. Ah, our mysterious partner. For a short time, I hoped it might be Bastin feeding us the names of these targets. He seemed the most likely man for a time. Only one way to discover the truth. Thank you, Hytham. I will take care of this.
They're off. Run up the sails. Sing us a song. Is there a sea scold among you? Right there? Yes, hello. I, I do not mean to intrude, but I am looking for someone. And who would that be then? I. I do not know exactly. Well, that would be why you ain't found him. But you're free to pass the time just here if you like. Thank you. Soul cakes, love. Do you know soul cakes? I do. I enjoy them. They're small things, size of a lumpy fist, so they'll bake fast. Keep your eyes sharp. And the butter? Do I baste them? No need, love. We we'll leave the butter for meal time. I look forward to it. Right then. I'll leave you to this. If you need me, I'll be doing the washing up next door. Quite a step down from your former work, Lord. As their guest, I volunteer to help with the daily chores. They offer me a bed. I tend the cakes. Do they not feel strange giving orders to their king? Or do they know? That knowledge would benefit no one. I read your message. You went through a great deal of trouble to obscure yourself as this poor soldier of Christ. As I remember, you even sent yourself one of these letters in Winchester. A clever touch. The Order wanted me dead. I had to be careful. You said you knew nothing about the Order then. Pled ignorance. But you knew everything. Their names. Their schemes. Would you join me for a war? You look well, Eivor. I am. The wars have ended, and my settlement thrives. The wars have not ended. You have simply stopped fighting. But men are brewing plots in mead halls and bedrooms. You will see. And how are you, Alfred? Getting used to the idea of being unremarkable? I am well. Better than I expected. In this exile, I have found a somewhat nourishing peace. Each morning I am awakened by the sun and growling cormorants. I bathe in the chilly water of the marsh. I eat from shrubs and drink from buckets. It is a good life. Simple. Blessed.
I've never been so far west. I find it quite peaceful here. Calming. I have traveled a long way to hear one name, Alfred. Who is the Otis Grand Magister? Tell your shadowy friends that England is swept clean. Your work is done. You? Grand Magister was not a title I desired. It passed to me on the death of my brother. From my father before him. Defilers of God's majesty and grandeur. I was their master, and I loathed them. With Goodwin, I set a plan in motion to destroy the order from within. But my troubles with the Danes delayed that plan. But your trouble with this Dane is what led to their demise. You are Norse, are you not? You have a good year. I owe you my thanks, Abel. For that, I give you this. The key to my study. That you may better understand the good you have done. With the order all but destroyed, you have made room for a greater idea. One to take its place. A universal divine order. Inspired by God for the betterment of man. With a poor fellow soldier at its head. You have saved England. Whether or not that was your intent. Now let England save you. England is no more, Lord. You are the last of her kings. And yet you have no kingdom. Look around you. God's works are wondrous. They cannot be ignored. Nor resisted. In time, all those who accept God will flourish. And all those who defy him will fall away. Should you remain in England, you too will one day be her subject. Oh, bloody crumbs! The cakes are burnt! Where is that man? Young man, where have you gone? Damn. That may have earned me a night of washing linens. I do not know if we shall meet again, Eivor. God willing, we will. As one lord to another, perhaps. I'm coming, my lady. I'm here. Alfred gave me a key to unlock his study. Just that. Dear, oh dear, look at them little balls of soot. Good lady, forgive me, I was lost in thought.
Hush now. Good scum. You salt skulls, got a story? In the early days of the feud between Kiotve the Cruel and the Raven Clan, there was a mad berserker called Kiar Robo. Kiar had pledged his battle fury to no king or yar, and would give his oath only once each winter, for reasons nobody could fathom. One year, Kiar's sister, Fula, was married to Kiotve's brother, Alrich, and soon Kiar was often seen in the company of that clan. But soon after, word came to Kiar that Alrich had abused his sister. When he asked Thora about this, she told him, it is true. So Kiar invited Alrek on a hunting expedition. When they were away, Kiar slew Alrek and pulled off one of his arms. We will pick up from there. I should talk to Itham. Sail out! So Kiar invited Alrek on a hunting expedition. When they were away, Kiar slew Alrek and pulled off one of his arms. When you return... ...they asked where his brother was. Kiara shook his head and held out his hand, in which was an armory. Your brother bid me give you this ring, Kiotve. Confused, Kiotve took the ring, and with it came the entire bloody arm. Your brother pledged his oath to hell herself, Kiara laughed. Then he turned and departed. He was never seen in those parts again. Strike up a tune. We need an epic tale. I often think on Estrid in my time in Essex. I was almost a year younger, and more foolhardy then. Once, the sight of her filled me with tempest. But those storms have calmed now. She did not giggle nor swoon like many girls I know. Wit was her weapon. She could unman you with one swipe of her tongue. But such grace, such light. Freya herself would not step with such elegance. Her gaze blinded me. Her words cut me down, raised me up, made me a wolf, a lamb, a babe, a sage. Wiser men than me have been made fools by love, but not all of them take the lesson from it that I have. When I marry, I will take an equal. No more, no less. A woman worthy of me, as I will be of her.
Set the mast up! Sail! Catch the wind! you Eivor, did Basim contact you in Norway? He said he would be joining you. Yet here you are, and I have no word from him. Hytham, this will be hard to hear, but Basim attacked us in Norway. Vengeance for some transgression of ours, imagined or real. You mean... You mean you slew him yourself? Sigurd and I, together. I know this comes as a... I do not understand. Why would he do such a thing? He loved Sigurd, he loved you. I do not understand it myself. Perhaps one day we can speak about this with more clarity. But for now, I am deeply sorry. Godum is dead, nameless and alone across the open sea. A master of the order hewn from the trunk of their dying tree. You are getting closer to the roots. Here you are, Hytham. The last of the order's sigils. You will find King Alfred's among them. King Alfred? Did our poor fellow soldier lead you to his hiding place? He did, for they were one and the same. Our poor fellow soldier of Christ was the Grand Magister of the Order of the Ancients. He turned on his own order. Fascinating. Not turned so much as trampled. His devotion to Christ and what he calls a universal order set him against them from the start. With all sincerity, he loathed the title and the duty he had inherited and wished them destroyed. Wonderful. With his abdication, the last stronghold of the Order has been dismantled. All that remain are scraps here and there. And you, Eivor. Now that you have seen our enemy and you understand our cause, I wonder if you would join us. Become a hidden one. Was this your ultimate goal, Hytham? A trial by fire? It is a kind offer, but I do not believe we fight for quite the same cause. Your creed demands that you keep your triumphs hidden. I prefer my glory to be in plain view for all to see. If I taught you our creed, if you spent time with it, it could open your mind to another view. Another view is always welcome. But to live without celebrating one's glory and honor and achievements is not a life for me. But know this. I would give my life in a moment for those I love and who love me in return. All here, including you, my friend. I understand you well, Eivor. Very well indeed.
one begins a long time ago at a desert oasis. Between you and me, Aver, always thought you'd be a good job. About you and Bridget, when do you wish to be wed? The sooner I can make her my wife, the happier I will be. But we are fine to wait until everything has settled here. Enough waiting. Cool your forge and cover your anvil. Let's get you married. Wonderful. Shall we gather everyone? Gather your wife and your courage. I will bring the people together. I am honored to stand before you, Gunner, Bridget, on this bountiful day. To celebrate the strength of your bond and to see you wed. I am in witness of a love that inspires and empowers. I invite you now to speak your vows. To you, my darling Bridget, I offer this blade forged in flames that burn as brightly as my heart does for you. A blade as sharp as your wit, as glinting as your beauty. May it sing through the air as sweetly as your voice meets my ears. Dio, seed we did carry to go now. To never am lookest, would it be the door to heed the tea and hurry out? And I, you, I give you my sword and my promise that I will stand at your side forever. Heed for the prodigy on future and heed, a distort hawaloch in hope, a premonition. On the mount of scrying a foresight, paratoivi a sweeping adventure meeting tea. Your enoid will demarash. A dean as strong, a buratiki. A quell as a fierce, but calon, and head van durati. Such poetry, oh dear. You make me cry, my love. Let us head van Evangelia, Trebowid and beyond. I offer you this ring. And take yours in kind. I will wear it with pride and honor, warmed by the love of so perfect a lady. And I whisk of a Valkalon, adoration a fee than myth. This is the greatest day of my life. Embrace me, my love. <laughs> With our couple now bonded in matrimony, now we drink. Alvis! I'm surprised you did not serenade the bride and groom with a verse or two. Oh, I wished to, I did. But all that came to me were insults and jibes. Another time, I think. Bridget, I gift you a formal welcome to our clan and our family. You are a fine addition to Gunnar's life and to ours. Dear Javier, I couldn't be more happy to Boma. Hope you never see worse in the case me sure that he is. Yes, of course. I, uh... As I say, it is wonderful to have you. Gunner, you old trout. 
You're a married man. Never thought I would see the day. Nor did I. And not for lack of trying. You have been among us for quite some time, Redda. Are you ready to settle? Make a home here? For a year or two, perhaps. But I am not the settling kind. I am a wanderer. Always searching, never finding. Maybe one day. Randvi, saw you looking a little lonely. Thought I might come and join you. How nice. Are you enjoying yourself? I am. I never thought I would see gruff old Gunnar so enraptured by a woman. Enraptured by anything, for that matter. He's a hard one to read, but I am pleased for him, and for this day of rest and respite. After everything, a few days of feasting will do the people some good. They need this. They do. Will you walk with me? Anywhere. Lead on. Something has been on my mind for some time. I am no seer, but I foresaw this day long ago. Not Gunnar's marriage, but our situation. Our success. How do you mean, our success? I mean to say that I saw our settlement flourishing, through our victories in war and in diplomacy. And from the day we set out from Norway, I knew that you would make a fitter leader than Sigurd. It was never in his character to lead. It was always within yours. I see. Do you? You might have warned me. You would not have listened. Fair. I do hope you see it now, in all that you have done for us. Andvi, you and the people here have done more for me than I could ever repay. I am honored by your faith in me, and your confidence. As I am honored by your friendship. And I by yours. Eivor, I want you to know that Sigurd and I are... We are severing the bonds of our marriage. We share a love that is steadfast, and I have faith it will forever be so. But it is not the love of a wife and her husband. It was not an easy decision. But after we talked with honesty, we embraced more warmly than we have in a great while. I think we will be happy. I hope so. And I am pleased for you. I am pleased for myself. Sigurd's desires are bigger than any man or woman can offer. He longs for something more. And what about you? What are you looking for? I have all I need right here. With you. With our people. I want to say, Randvi, I love you, and I have for some time. I did not pursue it, not wanting to betray my brother's trust. But that does not mean I did not desire it. Does that surprise you? Gods, I worried you saw me as a woman starved for the affection of her husband. ...that it was loneliness driving me. But it was you, Eivor. Only you. Everything you are, everything you will become. Randvi... ...without you I would have lost my way a thousand times. I never told him outright, but I doubt he will be surprised. I think he may have suspected it even... ...some time ago. If he suspected it, he never said anything. He is more observant than I often give him credit for. I believe he sees us as we are, and as we hope to be. We can wait to tell him. Give it a few days, when the feasting is over and everything is settled. Agreed. I have waited long enough for you, and you for me. What is another few days? The blink of an eye.
Shall we find our way back to the wedding? Bridget might give another speech. We must not miss that. About that? I have not understood a single word of her since Gloucestershire. Really? I find she speaks beautifully. With poetry, even. Are you kidding? Am I? Come, we should go. Day, my love. Should we take this to your chamber? Hmm. No need. just thinking about you. Just came to give you a kiss. How sweet of you, love. Come here.
I must. Until next we meet. Let's go. Sail! Catch the wind! Breathe sail! More sail!
Let the sail out! <laughs>
Do you see, Sunan?
Mouse, how are you, my boy? I want to... I should go. 